acephysics.org. Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis. Hi. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about capacitors. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the theory of capacitors, about what capacitors are, what capacitance is, and we have a really special guest. We have one of the leading capacitor experts in the world, and we're going to open up some capacitors and look inside the capacitors and really try to see what's on the inside and how it all works. We're going to start on tearing down this capacitor by cutting off the cover. Okay, now we're going to pull the cover off. And you will see that there are three leads. You'll see this here is an insulating material. Inside is the small five microfarad fan cap. What is a capacitor? A capacitor is a device that stores electrical energy. That's what a capacitor is. If you really want to be pedantic about it, it stores energy and it releases it. It does this by accumulating electric charge on two closely spaced conducting surfaces. What is capacitance? Capacitance is related to the geometry of two conducting objects. In this cartoon here, there's two conductors. There's a blue one on the left, a red one on the right. If I were to take a positive charge and I move it from the blue conductor to the red conductor, the blue conductor becomes negative because I've removed some positive charge from it, leaving leftover negative charge. And then the positive charge is deposited on the red conductor, making it positive. And the more charge I move, the more energy is stored in the system, the more work that I have to do. The geometry of a given set of conductors determines how much, how much the energy increases or how much energy is stored within the, within the capacitor. The next slide will contain visual aids to help understand this. You can see my capacitor playlist for problems and conceptual exercises on capacitor. The unit of capacitance is farad. Capacitance is all about geometry. This slide really gets to the heart of what capacitance is. This is the meat, or if you're a vegetarian, the tofu of what's going on here. This is the protein. On top are two conductors, one flat and one spherical. This is a capacitor. It's two separated conductors. There's a spherical conductor and a flat conductor. The, the flat conductor has negative five coulombs of charge on it. The spherical conductor has positive five coulombs of charge on it. On the bottom, here's another capacitor. And this capacitor is made up of two spherical conductors. So the bottom sphere has negative five coulombs of charge and the top sphere has negative five coulombs of charge. Now let's imagine that one coulomb of positive charge is moved from the negative conductor and pushed onto the positive conductor. I can take a positive charge and move it from the negative conductor and push it up to the positive conductor. That requires work. The positive charge wants to stay near the negatives and it wants to, and it's, rep and it's repelled away from the positives. And if I did that, this capacitor now would have six coulombs of charge on top and negative six coulombs of charge on bottom. And it would be the same situation if I did it with the capacitor on bottom with two spherical conductors. The change in energy of the top and bottom conductors is not equal. The, really what I should say is the change in energy of the top and bottom capacitors are not equal. The amount of energy it takes to move one coulomb of positive charge from the plate to the top sphere is not the same as the amount of energy that it takes to move one coulomb of positive charge from the bottom sphere to the top sphere. These two capacitors are different. They have different capacitance and therefore the energy stored in the system for the same amount of charge separation is not the same. That's the entire point of what capacitance is. The reason that they are different is because the two geometries have different capacitance value values. That's what capacitance is. Capacitance tells you how much energy is stored between the two conductors when charge is moved from one conductor to the, to the other, and different geometries correspond to different capacitors, correspond to different capacitance values. The amount of energy stored from one capacitor to another for the same charge separation is different. That's what capacitance is. This slide discusses parallel plate capacitors. Parallel plate capacitors are commonly used in engineering applications. This is a picture of a parallel plate capacitor. There's a conducting plate on top. The plate has area A. On bottom, there's another metal conducting plate of area A, and there's a dielectric in between the plates, and the plates are separated by some distance D. 
The fundamental formula for capacitance is C equals Q over V, and for a parallel plate capacitor, the capacitance is epsilon not A over D. Uh, as I said before, A is the area of the plate, D is the distance between the two plates, epsilon not is the permittivity of free space. Q is charge, the units of charge are coulombs, V is volts, that's voltage or potential difference, and the units of capacitance are the farads, named after Michael Faraday. Dielectrics. A dielectric is an electrical insulator that can be polarized by an applied electric field. Dielectric material is between the plates of virtually every capacitor. Capacitors are designed with dielectrics because dielectrics allow a capacitor to store more energy. This is because dielectrics increase the effective capacitance value. Dielectrics make the capacitance value larger. Dielectrics act as a barrier, preventing direct contact between the conducting plates. In the picture above, there's an atom. The atom has a positive nucleus and an electron cloud around the nucleus. If an electric field is applied to the atom, the nucleus will be pushed slightly to the right, and the, um, the cloud of electrons will be pushed to the left, and this will create some charge separation, albeit a small one, and um, there will be a dipole moment. Here's a capacitor with a dielectric inserted inside of the capacitor. This is one plate of the capacitor, which has positive charge plus Q. This is another plate of the capacitor, which has negative charge minus Q. And inside the capacitor, the dielectric material is polarized, which means there's an electric field in the material, and it causes all of these uh, molecules in the dielectric to have a slight shift where there's a positive and a negative, just like the picture above here. And if you have two molecules next to each other, this positive will cancel out with this negative, this positive will cancel out with this negative, this positive will cancel out with this negative. But when you get to the end of the plate, there's gonna be some positive charges. It's gonna be a charge separation within the dielectric. And these positive charges on this side reduce the effective charge because some of these positive charges will cancel the negative charges. There's gonna be less positive charges here than negative charges, but it works out that the total effective charge is less. It's the same thing for the positive plate. Some of the positive charges on the positive plate will be canceled by some of the negative charges that have been separated in the, within the dielectric. This is a film capacitor, so the dielectric material is a polymeric film. How many types of capacitors are there? There are four basic types. Polymeric film, aluminum electrolytic, ceramic oxide, and a tantalum oxide. And the aluminum electrolytic is an aluminum oxide. So the, these four are all the, all the capacitors. Not that they come in different sizes, but these cover all the different... The basic technologies. The, the basic technologies of the capacitors. Correct. There are four different types of dielectrics. There's polymeric film, there's an aluminum oxide, there's a tantalum oxide, and a ceramic. Okay, today we're going to take a look at what is inside of a polymeric AC film capacitor. To see what's inside of this film capacitor, we're going to cut the case open, and then we're going to unwind it. You said that this capacitor has two capacitors in it. Why does it have two capacitors in it? So air conditioners, as an example, have two devices inside of them that require a capacitor. One is a compressor that compresses the Freon, and another one is a fan that passes air over the coil to remove heat from the air conditioning coil. So we can use two separate capacitors, but it's lower cost to put both capacitors into a single case. And you will see that there are three leads and what's called a section inside. And in this case here, this capacitor actually has a little bit of fluid inside, and it has a dielectric liner oh. insulating material on the inside it's a little hard to see. that prevents the section from touching. That's the capacitor, and then inside of this, there is some liquid in here. Why, why, why is there, just give me one second. 
Why, why is there why is there liquid inside there? This liquid is used. You got to look in the camera. This liquid is used to impregnate all the small air spaces between the parallel plates that are wound up in this big circular geometry. Okay. On the inside is one capacitor. This is one capacitor. Correct. And then this circle here, that that is an insulator which separates the capacitor on the inside from the capacitor on the outside. Is that Correct. right? Okay, so there's two capacitors. I'm going to attempt to pull off the leads which were originally soldered on. Okay, on the outside of the capacitor is a insulated layer of material. Okay, now we're starting to actually get what we call a plate. And so this is very thin polymeric material and it has a aluminum or zinc coating on it, which is very thin. So when you talk about a parallel plate capacitor, um, what are the two plates? Is, are those the two plates? Those are the two plates. One's on top and one's on bottom. Yeah, and we're going to try to separate these. So we, we took pieces of the capacitor, the parallel plate capacitor, and we cut them off to try to pull them apart and show the two different parallel plates. So this is, so that would be the top plate and the bottom plate, right? Correct. We did finally, we were finally able to take apart the capacitor, a piece of the capacitor. Can you um, hold it up maybe? All right, so those are the two, those are the two, par the plates. So if they were, the two plates would be, what if you close it? Um, so that would be, those would be the two plates and then the dielectric, what is the dielectric, where's the dielectric? Is, is that the dielectric, what we're looking at? The clear material that you see over here is polypropylene. So there's a dielectric which is here, but you can't, you can't really, see. it looks like it's just two pieces of um, aluminum on top of each other. There's actually material in between there. So this is a very thin coating of zinc. It could be aluminum, but most likely zinc. Okay. And it is... Hold on, you, um, turn it that way maybe. Yeah. And it is maybe one hundredth of the thickness of the film, and the film is somewhere around six microns. So six one millionth of a uh, meter. This is a parallel plate capacitor. So there's one dielectric material with a very thin zinc coating on it, and there's another layer on the other side, and there's polypropylene between them. And so this is the parallel plate. Only you need a lot of area. Hold on, where's, is the parallel, the parallel plate is this side and the bottom side, right? Correct. This is, this is to, so this is the top of the plate. Can we see the bottom of the plate? And this is the bottom, this is the other plate. And so the distance, can you, um, the distance is literally the thickness. Correct. That, that's, so the distance is very, very tiny. Correct. Right, epsilon not A over D, and, um, and the distance is small. We can actually attempt to measure the thickness. So this has a thickness of 0.01 millimeter. The thickness is actually smaller than the 0.01 millimeter, but that's getting into the accuracy of the calibers. Uh-huh. And, and they make the distance small because that increases the capacitance. You want to get a big capacitance value. That's correct. And the smaller the distance, the larger the capacitance value. Correct. And uh -huh. the distance has to be big enough, though, to withstand the voltage. And so you need the thinnest distance you can to withstand the voltage, and that'll give you the largest possible capacitance. Try what do you think is the area of this? Just based on your experience with this, that, that looks like that would probably be Hundreds to thousands of square meters. Hundreds to thousands of square meters. So this could easily have 
three to five thousand turns. All right, so now we're going to look at a different capacitor. What kind of capacitor is this? This is an aluminum electrolytic capacitor, and it has aluminum oxide dielectric instead of a polypropylene dielectric. Okay, and let's discuss the specifications. So on you, you can see it's only good for 2.7 volts. This stripe means it's DC and not AC, so the negative terminal gets connected here, and the positive terminal gets connected there. You can also see that it's 500 farads. The motor run capacitor, if you remember, was 440 microfarads. So we're looking at over a million difference in size of the capacitance. So this capacitor is a million times bigger than the capacitor we just, it's, it, its capacitance value is a million times larger than the one we just looked at. Right. And in terms of charge, if you take 2.7 volts times 500 farads, you'll get the charge in coulombs. The other capacitor was 440 volts, but only 400 microfarads. And so this capacitor actually has more charge on it than the motor run capacitor we just tore apart. This capacitor has an indented here, and this is a much thin area. So if this capacitor builds up pressure inside, then this vent will open and relieve the pressure before the capacitor explodes. And it would build up pressure only if it had dielectric breakdown? Over time, it will age, and the oxide can break down, and so it can generate gas as well from just aging but the large amount of gas will normally be developed when there's a dielectric breakdown. So here is one foil, which is the anode. Here's the other foil, which is the cathode. That makes it a DC capacitor because you have to put the right electric field between this material and this material. Okay, and these two plates, this is, this is plate one and this is, plate, this is the parallel plates. This is one plate and this is the other plate. And the oxide, or the dielectric, is actually grown on this surface. And this is a craft paper insulator that is used to make sure that the cathode cannot touch the anode. Even though there's a dielectric grown on there? That's correct. So if they were to touch, it would be the dielectrics that are touching. That's right. But you also have to conduct from the plate through the oxide through the oxide to this plate. And so this craft paper also is, is used to absorb an electrolytic fluid which conducts electricity from one side to the other side. It has a much thicker, it's got a smaller area, which is interesting because that is such a bigger capacitance. It has a very large area because the area is much larger than the projected area. Why is that? And that's because we have a bunch of small surface crevices that have been etched into the surface. And so if you take all the area of all these little crevices that have been formed inside, uh -huh. that becomes much larger than the projected area. Wow. By hundreds of times. Okay. All right. Okay, that's interesting. And the dielectric film is much thinner than the polypropylene. So the polypropylene we can't make much thinner than about four to five microns. But the aluminum oxide can be grown to be a fraction of a micron in thickness. And so there's no way that, to see the, um, the dielectric. The dielectric is a thin layer here that it just is impossible to see without some sort of a microscope. And that thin layer is not just sitting on a flat surface, it coats all of these indentations that have been etched in the film. So if you were to look at the surface of this, it would, it, would, it would look like a whole bunch of mountains, kind of. Correct. Okay, and it, that's designed specifically in, to get in that a way. high surface area. Okay. okay. And so if you can think about it, if you were to stretch that material out so all the mountains became flat, the area would be hundreds of times larger than just the projected area.